Hey everyone, it's Henry here from Henry Creations. Welcome back to another free live workshop on YouTube. Today, we are finally gonna be adding all those metallic layers that you all like. We're gonna be using Alumilaster, Duralumen, Dan is gonna be using Duralumen, and maybe some Alclad. So if you have access to any of those three, uh, join us, it's gonna be fantastic. And also, if you have access or if you have purchased the files of my Black Widow Batons or the Mjolnir, this, th these workshops are gonna be fantastic for you. Okay, so this is the second one. Then we'll have another one next Saturday with, with Daryl again. And then the last one with Frankly Built. And on, and on that one, we'll actually take care of all the electronics inside of the batons. But that is so simple. It's just the simplest circuit. You know, the, the one that you learned at school. It's even simpler than that. It's so easy. So don't, don't let that um, dishearten you. It's gonna be so easy. But yeah, and um, as a reminder, I have a 50% discount on my Etsy shop. So if you wanna grab these files or any other files that I have there, feel welcome, uh, of course. And uh, also, if you guys feel inclined to donate to us, you have a link there on Ko-fi and we'll just split the, the earnings at the end. So um, guys, without any further ado, I wanna introduce Daryl. Daryl is just an amazing painter, maker, create, creative person. He's done so many different paint jobs. He's always experimenting, you know, and experimentation has to come into play every single day of our lives as uh, prop makers, painters. It's just, it has to happen because if we don't experiment, we're just gonna stick to the same old filler primer, sand, black base, gloss, all that stuff that you all know. So this one, this live stream is gonna be all about experimentation and Daryl knows a lot about it. So guys, without any further ado, Let's welcome Daryl. Hey, buddy, how are you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, Henry? Hey, brother, so good to see you. Like, this is, I'm so excited. Yesterday with Faye, it was amazing. And I'm so glad that we pushed the, the live stream back one week because I, now I know that I, had, I hadn't set up things correctly and now I am so sure that it's all good. So, um, oh yeah. So yeah, like I'm ready. I'm excited. Hell yeah, buddy. Like, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, when did you start? painting or 3d printing and how did it all come out like at the beginning so so 3d printing i think it was like 20 14 or 15 whatever the first year was that the uh, a net a8 came out the uh the printer that burns people's houses down i had one of those kits and ah. I, I i had this idea in my mind that i was going to uh, 3D print power armor. <laughs> oh yeah, like a fully wearable power armor on this A net, right? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I don't know anything about 3D printing, so obviously that hasn't happened yet. Because if you follow me online, you've probably seen that by now. But um, I've always kind of had like a, a, a love for cosplay and replica props and like movie props and everything like that. And I just, you know, was looking at the 3D printer one day and was like, hey, I could use that to make, you know different props. So it started with, you know, the Iron Man repulsor gloves or oh. an Iron Man helmet to just like fake like knives and, you know, whatever from various different movies and things like that. And, uh, as the years continued, I got a CR 10, the CR 10 oh. allowed me to print like full size helmets. And I don't, I don't know where the paint came into it. It, it was probably back in the early days of Nico, Nico oh, Industries, yeah. uh, 3D printing and paint. Like, I mean, like when there was like a thousand people in that group, I was like in there and it was basically like everybody trying to figure out like, well, how do you get rid of layer lines? How do you make this look realistic? Oh, and blah, wow. blah, blah. It was a lot of bouncing um, ideas off each other, trying out different things, wood filler, Bondo, whatever we could get our hands on. Yeah. Uh, I saw like somebody was using like the drywall um, stuff out of the caulk gun. <laughs> wow! Like, like like we did we did everything right. So then after that, it was now I have to figure out how to make this look better. And it started with you know rattle can paint jobs, um, but then you know the rattle can just wasn't enough. So then it's an airbrush, and now it's an HVLP yeah. setup, and you're experimenting with acrylics and lacquers and solvent based paints alcohols and then you know how do you turn this now amazingly brightly chromed piece into this world used beat to hell yeah. looking prop and that's where the experimentation comes in so it's basically me 
going to the hobby store, buying random crap, bringing it home, trying <laughs> it out and presenting it for people on YouTube. Yeah, that's amazing because I know that you have a YouTube channel and you're doing a lot of really cool, sh like fast paced, amazing to watch tutorials on how to do different things like metallics, uh, trying out dual lumen. Uh, you've, you've done the, uh, the, 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 the motor combat uh, masks. You've done the, the rescue yeah. helmet, which is where you show how to use the Copic inks. Uh, so you achieve that gold, really, which you have right there on the back, guys, if you can see. Um, yeah, yeah, it's behind me. I can go grab it yeah, and pull it up here. Yeah, I'm going to give you well, that. I'll bring the faceplate up. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just amazing. Pull and up here, baby. You have so much, and you're going to continue to upload so much free, good info. Oof, damn, I have to stop talking because that's just wow. Look at that. And it doesn't, like, it's crazy. It's just, it's just, oh. look at that. It's got damn. the brush. Yeah. Brushed metal on it. It's probably hard to tell over the webcam. Yeah. But I mean, it retained the reflectivity of the gold. And if you look at the, um, one of the eyes is missing because I was resin printing them and fitting them, make sure they worked. Um, but if you look at the reference photos for the rescue suit from Endgame that Legacy Effects. Yeah, I've seen those. Oh, yeah. Theirs is plated. It's chrome plated. And then they, I'm, I'm pretty sure they just uh, put gold over that. Uh, it's not chrome, like airbrush yeah, or paint, yeah. paint, paint. So I was trying to figure out how to capture that. And, you know, I had a couple conversations with some other makers. And um, some people were like, yeah, man, you know, I use Copic ink for this gold. And, or I used an ink, uh, alcohol ink for a gold. And so people were telling me. And I was like, oh, oh like, yeah. And I started researching and then found out you could buy these refills and you can spray it and you can get amazing results. Wow. And it sprays evenly and you can overlap the each pass with the next one. And like, it's, that's crazy how well that works. And I can't, I don't have, I don't think I have access to Copics. I have to do a lot of research here and go to actual stores in the city uh, to big ones. But like, I've asked and they're like, no, they're like, they're just like, no, no, like they don't want to even hear about them. It's crazy. Um, so there must be... I mean, you can buy it. It doesn't... See, and that's the thing. I think... Uh, I don't know if I explained that in that video, but you don't need a Copic ink. You just need an alcohol. Right, ink. right, right. Um, I mean, if you want to go the cheap route, you can get 99% alcohol, yeah. pour it in uh, like a little plastic bottle or something like this. Mm -hmm. And you can literally rip apart like a Sharpie marker. Oh, wow. And you can take the, the ink that's in here because uh, these are alcohol-based, I believe. And you can take the whole ink insert and put it in that bottle and it'll strip all that out and now you have a red alcohol like amazing amazing that that is tip number one for you guys like coming at you straight from daryl like this is i i never thought about that it's crazy like and that comes with experimentation like if you don't try you never know yep. and if it fails maybe it works for something else <laughs> actually i um I have alcohol little like little bottles of alcohol inks in different colors that I used for the um, for the for the blaster cartridges of the Stalo blasters for the resin effects because it, it's really cool to mix in with resin. And I did try on the lightsaber that copper that you see on the lightsaber is actually red. On top of um, I, I I put some red in the clear coat, uh, some red alcohol ink yep. in the clear coat on top of the. Uh, polished brass by our cloud I think yeah yeah because I, I do have the copper paint but I didn't want to try that because I know that is a bit more matte and I needed something a bit shiny so I just thought about let's just uh, let's just try the old you know the clear coat uh, with a with a uh, with a candy you know even though that's not candy and I just built up the layers and it turned out really really well I'm really happy about that one um, so yeah like I think that's the, the furthest I've, I've gone with uh, kind of like clear coat with 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 uh, candies or or copics or alcohol inks anything um i have done whether yeah, any any, tra any transparent ink over a chrome is awesome yeah like the finish that you're the, le the level of fidelity you're allowed to achieve with an ink over just like a regular acrylic paint because they kind of spit a little bit and inks have like a very nice coverage i, I just i have so much fun with ink yeah they're great to mess around with yeah, amazing, man. Like I said, if you don't want to buy any, just tear some Sharpies open at home. <laughs> I mean, they make metallic Sharpies. They make all kinds of stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, like, it's crazy how many things we can use. Like, we've never thought about. We never we never think about, uh, like, Sharpies or, like, classic, uh, yeah, classic alcohol, like, uh, markers. It's crazy. And now, now you can, you can uh, do anything, you know? Yeah. Yep.
But uh, yeah, so uh, some people in the chat, Anton, sorry I'm late, running all machines. Hey Anton, how are you doing man? And of course, we one extruder started clicking. Oh no, just as I was going here. <laughs> oh no, we'll get back to that and come back once you've fixed it. I hate that man. Uh, Anton is a good friend of mine, he's a client of mine, and he's also a Patreon of mine. I don't really um, advertise Patreon anymore because um, um, I don't, uh, I don't know, I, I had my, my models there and I released them, but I would never like say, you know, um, it came a point where I was like, this is too good, I'm just going to give it to them. <laughs> and then I just, uh, after Christmas, I stopped that and I, I, I got rid of most of the tiers except the first ones. Um, but yeah, uh, so Anton, uh, go back to Anton, he's a, he's a really good friend of mine um, and he's on the Patreon group that we have. And yeah, he shares all these cool things and, and, and tricks, so yeah. Yeah, Anton. Um, so yeah, man. Like, I think uh, we should start painting. What do you think? Woo. Hell yeah! I'm always down to start painting. Yeah. So um, someone else said hello. What's up, everybody? What's up, Van Oaks? Props. How you doing, man? Um, so yeah. So basically, um, I'm gonna show you up to now what I've done. Okay. What, what I did yesterday with Faye. Um, put this on here. I mean, let's put on some gloves so we don't touch. Uh, we don't touch any of these beautiful pieces that I've already half painted. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Also, uh, a reminder, guys, please use a respirator. If you have one of those $20 fans that you can get in any store, just get one of those and point it directly at the window. Um, it, it does a trick, and it, it's, been, it's been doing a trick for me for a long time. Um, so the combination of all these safety measures is what matters, you know, not one, but all three. Window, fan, and the respirator. Um, but yeah, so basically, let's take you guys through uh, where we left off. So first of all, I have a failure here. Let me show you. <laughs> this is a complete failure. I uh, I was click hosting it and there was some residue, some, some must have been... Um, yeah, it must have been just uh, oils from my hands and they just, oh, it was messy, so I had to sand it back down. So I'll be, maybe I'll be painting this black later on. Another another failure. Um, I've tried with the with the discs, um, with the uh, with the discs of the hammer twice. I have one here. It's kind of almost done uh, painting. You, you can see that there are, it has all the scratches there. I'm gonna yeah, put me on me. It has all the scratches, and uh, I was trying to see. Oh, the, you see, there's like a diameter that kind of spins a little bit, and that's why, and that that's caused uh, by all these uh, scr uh, circular scratches here. So um, hopefully, with this one, we can truly achieve that effect. That's why I printed two. I might print another one, in fact. Um, but yeah, so basically, what we have is all of the pieces were uh, black base coated and also clear coated with a 2k i explained how to use the 2k to an airbrush if you don't have a paint gun and that is by using a simple universal solvent it works a treat for me uh, and actually it allows you to spread it to, to, to spread really thinly and this way you're not going to get that um, orange peel effect um, you know that you normally um, would get if you use a gun and uh, and also yeah, so it's it's been working really well. I've done the lightsaber, that method, and I'm now doing these. Um, one of the main points yesterday was um, the sp spun or brushed aluminium or steel finish. And that is, you can achieve that through a different, um, through, through a variety of ways. But I found that uh, through experimentation and testing, like I told you guys, and like we've mentioned here, um, you're going to get the best results. So I have a background in video games and right there I learned a lot about realistic uh, material properties, whether it's wood, metal, grass, anything, right? In terms of, um, let's see, there. in terms of um, sheen, color, you know, uh, weathering, all these, all these crazy things, right? So um, I have tested uh, on a lot of pieces so far. This must be like the 20s piece that I've done this effect on. And uh, let's talk a little bit, in fact, let's, let's, let's pause for a second and talk a little bit about 
these materials, the materials that we're going to try to emulate uh, on the Black Widow batons and the, the hammer. So let me get my remote and basically we have the first one which is this one. It's the spun or turned steel um, effect and basically uh, I have separated this into or I have made slides for each of the materials, each of the three materials that we're going to be um, testing today, let's say. So the first one, you can see it's a sphere, right? You can see that it's right there on the screen, there's a sphere, and that sphere is turning. So it's an animated sphere, okay? So for these three materials, you're going to be able to see how they react to the light, okay? And now, right there, you can see that the, the sphere has, like, vertical scratches, right? And that's why when they approach that light source, they get a little bit brighter, or like they get like burned right with the light so uh, what you have on the right is the color it's the information of the color so you know that we have you always do like the black gloss base and then you know for any chrome effects we do the black gloss and then uh, the clear coats and then the metallic aluminum luster R-clad, duralumin, spastics whatever floats your boat right um, the thing is that is for a chrome effect so for that by all means go black and, and do uh, and use your favorite uh, chrome paint, right? Uh, and we're going to be using Duralumin, Alumalasta, and maybe Arclad today. So, but the thing with, with this is that because it is not fully polished, because it has scratches, okay, the more polished it is, the more black you have to go with that base. But the less it is, the more gray you, know, you have to go with that base. Uh, gold, for example, really polished gold is black too. And what you see, is the color of the reflections, not the color of, of, of the material itself. It's the reflections that have a tinted gold look. And that's why people do the 2K with the with the candy, you know, to tint the the chrome finishes to achieve their gold effects, right? It makes total sense. You're gonna see here on the next slide that for the spun aluminium effect or steel in this case, um, you have the specular color. That is the color of the reflection. So that is the color that you see normally, right? But that is as bright as or as light as that halo around that spot that light because this sphere is actually like in 3d i put it inside of a studio so you have a lot of lights and now you can see um all the all the spots and things so this the specular color is going to be as light or as dark as that halo around the uh, the highlight right so if you don't have a halo that's a good indication that is it is a plasticky finish it's not metallic so you need to have a little bit like of a burned halo you know if you look at it directly under the sun or any under under any um artificial light you're going to have that halo if if you don't have it that means that you went over the top with a clear coat or something something's gone wrong right so that is the specular color the the actual color itself let's go back is as dark as the darkest areas of the reflections so you can see now there must be some like furniture some in there right that is like as dark as that color if it was a chrome effect you would see that's a good indication when it's a good chrome effect if you can see yourself and the shades you know in on you on, on your clothes or whatever are as dark as the shades in the reflection that's a good indication that is a perfect chrome look okay if if it is lighter that means it's more towards steel aluminium that sort of thing right so yeah, so that's the, the color. Then we have, as I explained, the specular color. And then we have, um, so those, those uh, let's call them maps. That's what they're called in video games. Those are, the maps are in color. Right now, I'm going to show you some that are going to be in, in black and white. And in video games, I want to imagine that each of the little spots of that sphere is a pixel. So basically, the maps are the painted pixel, but just uh, flattened down, right? So this is the metallic property. So white in any of these black and white maps is presence. And I know this is gonna blow your mind and it's probably hard to understand, but bear with me, okay? That'll bear with me. <laughs> um, this makes a lot of sense. So this says that all of this fear is metallic because it's white, it's like true, right? And black is false, means absence. So if you're gonna weather this, for example, with throwing like, a, like some oils on there, that will kind of darken some areas, it will make them less metallic, you know, it will make it more like matte finish. So that's when you would have on the metallic map, you would have like darker areas, right? It makes sense. Um, and that's where the roughness map comes into play. Roughness means how smooth the surface is, right? 
So in this case, for the aluminium, and I know it looks very similar to the color, but it is not the color uh, map. This is the roughness. So white is rough. So that means it is not shiny. And black means it is not rough. So it's smooth, right? So a clear coat, 2K, would make it all black, this map, right? So by interpreting these maps, which you can find on Quixel, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. If you go to quixel.com, they have a lot of maps different materials, you can analyze them. In fact, I did this for one of the finishes on, on the batons and you'll see why. If you do this, <clears throat> you're gonna be able to understand how to paint the prop um, you know, in, in accordance to the realistic material properties in real life. So that's why it's helpful. And that's why I'm kind of like hitting you over the head with this, but we're not gonna linger on here much longer, but just think that when you brush th something with, the, with steel wool, which we're gonna do, uh, you're gonna create a difference in this map some some areas that those strokes with the steel wool or the scotch right are going to be a bit more rougher right and that's why um the sheen when you have the light hitting that spot there those lines become like a bit burned because they're rougher and therefore they're not catching the reflection they're just catching that harsh light that is bouncing in all directions in within that little crack and that's why you see it white um as you see the sphere so yeah that is going to be the first finish and then i have uh different ones but let's just focus on that first one let's go back and i'm going to explain to you now let's go back let's go back let's go back <laughs> hi guys uh, i'm glad you're still there with us uh <laughs> that was a lot right that was a lot uh, so what are we drawing <laughs> hey javi javi is a good friend of mine from from uni um he can he can say hi yeah he actually has um he has changed the way i work for the better like he's so hard working and yeah just a quick shout out to him because like i definitely learned a lot from him at uni uh so yeah so the the spun look remember that first map it was the color right so when we when we have which we'll do this now when we have maybe even this one when we have um a piece that we want it to, to look like turned steel or aluminium first thing we have to do is paint paint the color map here so this is black now right you, if i zoom in even closer you can see maybe that there are some some scratches already going around the cylinder let's call this a cylinder um for explanation's sake you can see now right that there's little scratches how did i do this to recap a little bit let's zoom out what well, how i did this was i took a drill um this is this is going to be super helpful um when it comes to getting these perfect uh spun effects all right so i took a drill which i've got here and i've actually which i introduced yesterday i have uh models different tools like stands and things so i don't have to touch the pieces i cut one of those and i'm using it as an attachment for the drill so what i do is i put this one here in fact let's put it the other way around it works better I put it here and then I place it right inside the drill and I try to get that aligned properly and I just tighten this there we go no it's the other way is it, is it the other way it is the other way all right I tighten this and we are officially starting now I tighten this up and I now I can I can push this button See, and it will spin. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So right now, you're looking at, at my drill. That sounds completely wrong. But um, <laughs> <laughs> basically, take, I found that steel wool works the best. Let's, steel wool, um, works the best for me so i've tried these white uh, scotch white pads i've tried the green ones but this we're going to use for the last stage and the, the green one i'm just going to use it for the disc so watch this you'll see how this starts looking more like a spun um like a spun piece of metal so i just put it on there and i press that button and i get this closer forgive me for the sound but uh is what it is So, uh, 
and that edge at the end at the bottom. All right, let's see if you can see the difference now. Maybe with this light. Oh yeah, that light helps. Now focus, there we go. So right now we have created a difference in the color because it has a gray areas and also the sheen. The roughness map has changed now. Uh, it is more like actual and like an actual piece because the that point of the in the mill is rougher, so it kind of creates that difference in the sheen. So right now I can see it's turning a bit more grey, and I and I start to I'm starting to like that. So I'm going to continue a little bit with this uh, white slope here. There we go, that is perfect. And as you can see, it hasn't changed the overall 2K effect at all. It's still there, like the that that highlight is still pretty well defined, but now it's kind of broken up. You know, it's a little bit distorted because of the uh, because of the imperfections that we created. So let's put this one to the side, and let's do another one like this one, which is the pommel. Um, oh, there we go. There we go. This is the pommel, and it already I already did a little bit before the 2K. And that was the first stage. Right now we have to do it after 2K. So the, before 2K, it was just to create um, between the primer, which is the black one, and the piece, which was actual, actually it was gray or, or, or light gray. We're gonna create that difference in color. And that was the color map. Right now, we're gonna do a little bit of, of the roughness. So for these guys, I have an extra piece, it's, which is an attachment just for the pummel. So I just uh, spent a lot of time creating these little tools that would make my life easier. There's a little key here, and that's why it can rotate. Mm -mm, there we go. So I'm gonna put it in, in the drill again. There we go. Close that. And now that will spin again. See, perfect. So we take the same piece of steel wool. It has like a, like an edge, you know, so you can do this uh, easier. And again, just uh, push that button and place your hand there. It helps when you go down with it, like as if we were milling it out, also it won't come out. But there we go. We have created a difference in the color and also a little bit in the sheen. Let's do the, the, the bottom part here as well because it is also kind of spun. There we go. It's a little bit, uh, has a, a few of the, of the fibers, but we'll clean that up in a second. So that's the other one. Let's do now. Guys, are you getting this? Do you understand what this is all about? Let's see, dude, using the drill is a great technique. I would have never thought of it. <laughs> yeah, man, it's just so so <coughs> easier. Fantastic technique. Thank you, Kevin. Uh -huh, Brock Weasel. I'm actually starting to learn how to render. Sorry about my slow reading. I can't really see the comments. Uh, render objects in Blender. So this is really helpful. Yeah, yeah. That's what well, if you if you learn about about Blender, you can understand a lot of uh, ways to paint the, the materials. Yeah, so let's continue doing this. Um, so now we're gonna we're gonna make uh, the same thing. We're gonna do the same thing for the famous first piece of the hammer of the of the handle of the hammer. So and Daryl, you uh, resized. I'm gonna resize you quickly. So. But uh, Streamlabs sometimes d does this, um, but it's okay. I'll just make you a little bit bigger. I just, uh, I'm just, I just have spoons over here. You got all the good stuff. Ah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Those black spoons and some, some chrome, man. You know. Yeah. That's how I test everything out. Yeah. Wow, that's two dollar boxes of spoons go a long way. That's amazing. Yeah, like I've tested, I tested the Luminaster paint. On spoons because I was really it was really nerve-wracking at the beginning so I was like you know why not just yep. test on on spoons 
and is the because speed shapes, which are the the test uh, pieces when you know when you're painting cars, uh, are hard to get. I can't get them, so Spoons just uh, it does a trick. So I can get speed shapes. They're just uh, expensive for what they are. Yeah. I mean, and they're a lot bigger. I mean, yeah, you waste a lot of paint. Probably can get a, a better idea of what you're you're doing as far as like uh, like this technique you're showing with the drill, or even using steel wool by hand over yeah. a gloss black speed shape because of the different variations and elevation on one of yeah. those. But I think the spoon just does it for me because I think I once you kind of have an understanding of where you're trying to go with your paint job, the spoon will will be the thing. I mean, I kind of, I collect spoons. Yeah. I have spoons everywhere. I've got like a bag there. Test spoons. Yeah. I've like a bag of them and different ones I do different things on and try to get different textures or whatever. Yeah. It's just so, so, so useful. Like, spoon is my it's quick. Like you just put the, not even the 2K, you put the, the gloss black by our cloud on there, a bit thick and that does the trick. So yeah, yep. like it's easy. Um, so yeah. Well, I've been using, uh, see, I've been using, where's it at? It is a duplicolor. It's this uh, acrylic lacquer. And this stuff is pretty amazing. Um, just for quick tests. I mean, and then uh, I use the black sandable primer by duplicolor too. This is the one that I'll usually like smack with a clear coat just to have oh, that yeah. high shine. Because um, it's matte. You clear it. It's now Boom. glossy. Yeah. It doesn't matter that the paint actually matte. It's what the top coat is. Yeah, yeah, you're laying your exactly. But I use that stuff, those two specific spray cans and things that I can do a lot with them versus spending the money on the all class and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the, yeah. Or the, the four ounces of the black. That stuff is expensive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I have a black gloss can here that I use for the head of the hammer like uh, two hours, two hours ago. And it just works good. You know, it just works good. Like, there's no need when you're covering big surface areas. There's no need to use like Arclad for all that. Good thing about oh, Arclad, no. you can yeah, do it right. inside, and that avoids a lot of the dust and, and particles and things. Um, so it really comes in handy when when you have to do like small pieces like these these ones. But yeah, look at these. What the hell? Let's zoom in again. Yeah. Let's see. See if you can if you can see it. See how that highlight is broken down a little bit it's just distorted because i just i just uh did a few cuts you know on it with a with steel wool it's like it's bleeding right and you can see that the, the sheen is still there like you can still see my finger and everything on the reflection so we're good and it, this creates a difference in the color it reinforces a little bit after because i do it before the 2k and after as well before the 2k to create a little bit of depth between the layers and uh, after the 2K to create that difference in the sheen right before the Illumina still any metallic paint. So I think uh, let's do, let's try and do the, the disc of, of, the, of the hammer. Like th this, this motherfucker, like I can't get this one right, but uh, I'm going to show you what I do. So instead of a tool like that, I have, I have a whole different one, which is the thing that spins, right? And uh, just put it on there again. <laughs> And that's how it's done. It's just, as you can see, that the drill really comes in handy. Like, it helps a lot to get that, you know, those perfect uh, strokes. See what they say. Mm -mm. Mm, yeah, no more questions so far, no more comments. I have a few questions from Instagram saved on my phone, so we'll get to those later on. So yeah, they, this one is a bit more difficult to do because uh, it, it, it wants to to make my to to, to um, uh, yeah to, to kind of make my hand move where it shouldn't go. So and if I grip it like that, it's gonna it's gonna burn my fingers a little bit. So I have to because I have this little nib here that's part of the design. I'm gonna grip it there and see if I can do this. Um, and to the fat there. Let's do this. And I was kind of pressing, oh, that's perfect. Pressing down even even further as I went. Look at this. 
Look, see how that, that reflection spins? That little highlight, see how it spins? See that? That's what we're looking for here. See that, Daryl? No, you're gonna see it yep. in a minute on the live stream, but look at that, that's beautiful, right? Yep, I got it, yep. That's exactly what we want. So the trick with this one is that it is difficult to, uh, to, to not overdo it. So if I went again, I'll probably mess it, mess it up. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. Even if I didn't go as deep as I wanted, we still have the lighter edges, which is uh, key also in achieving any kind of highlighted, uh, instead of using you know, a dry brushing technique, you just do, you kill off the edges a little bit and uh, it just works really well. That way they're gonna appear a little bit lighter and the, the light is gonna, is gonna uh, deposit on them as it moves. So that is, that's, that came out perfect, like, I, I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, guys, what do you think? Like this is, <laughs> this was pure luck, but also I've done this a few times now. So we're gonna put this to the side. <laughs> yep. Put that to the side. And I think uh, as far as, oh no, another one more to turn. That one that I painted. Uh, da, da, da. So this is again, another pommel. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I love this little little tool. <laughs> it's it's wonderful. Uh -huh. Yeah, it looks killer, man. It just it just does. And uh, like, but I have finally today realized how I have to do all these spun looks. It's taking me a while. Some people do it right after the gloss uh, clear coat like we're doing here. Some people do it after the Illuminaster. Some people do it after the clear coat at the end. I do it in, in each of the stages for, for a different reason. I just follow the maps on Quicksort and I see if they have that look, that's when, when I do it. So uh, this one. And now let's go see what Daryl is up to. Yeah. I'm trying to clean up my little paint area. It's always a mess over here. That's a good idea. Let's do that too. I'm definitely going to be testing out this technique. I'm going to show you that. There we go. So this one looks fantastic. It just... Oh. I did this for the, for the lightsaber. Like the first time I did it with the drill, it was for that. And it was eye opening. It looks so good. It like, pff. You're probably like, what? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? It just looks so fucking good. All right. We're allowed to curse here. The, this is not PG. So. Oh, oh. sugar. <laughs> all right, so I think I'm done uh, turning all the pieces. We could do that as also for the, uh, for the chevrons on, on the handle of the, uh, of the Mjolnir. But uh, I don't think I want to do it. Um, so let's get on to using a Lumilaster, baby. Let's do this. I'm gonna put the drill down. And uh, let's let's see what Daryl is up to. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this drill technique because I've been playing it on doing a Mjolnir, and uh, yeah, I've actually been asked a bunch why I haven't done one yet. <laughs> uh, and now that I'm doing this, it's like oh, I'm learning some things too. It's about yeah. to happen. Yeah, it, oh, there you go. Yeah, man, it's just the drill technique. It just came to me. I was like, it does, it makes a lot of sense. You know, most of the times I'm like, okay, what, what does, what makes sense here? Uh, so I'm just going to put these tools down. We'll keep this one, the stand. Also guys, I did a few test paints. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, that you can see here. Did a few of these guys. Uh huh. There we go. And yeah, so you can see the Illuminaster is shining through that matte black. Some of the edges are worn. I'm not going to do it as over the top as here. I was just testing. And you can see that the lip right there is also a Illuminaster and the tube is gloss black. So that is why I have, um, I started with the gloss black on all the pieces like this one, right? There we go, like this one. And uh, then I have a little piece that is called a masking tool. And I'm gonna explain to you right now how that works. 
that it's just yeah, instead of using tape genius yeah <laughs> i'm so i'm so proud of these guys so <laughs> imagine because we're going to have to paint now everything in a luma Lasta or any metallic paint of your choice except the tube so i just put it on there and it just covers the tube and i can just uh put this on the stand <laughs> and uh, there we go and nothing will um nothing will no metallic paint will touch that tube i can just uh paint the rest of it of the piece with uh, the metallic paint you know so therefore also it won't it won't peel off the paint because there, there's, there's no tape there's no glue nothing underneath so i could just slide it back out again so i have a masking tool for this we'll paint everything in aluminaster we'll clear coat it after that's done which i have i have a few here that i already did it will look like this it will look like this right so for that one i have a different masking tool um put this on there i have one that i've got two actually the first one it goes over the tube again but instead of it's focus 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 all right instead of going just over the tube it goes over the tube and over that lip see if you can see it now it covers that lip okay, see there boom because i want to keep that in metallic in uh, steel finish whatever you want to call it right in aluminum so that covers that the other piece is for covering the lip on the other side instead of being instead of sliding over anything it is the thing that has a key that goes into the hole where the rod goes and that's where you can just boom and that covers that right so now i can paint this whole thing black clear coated with a matte varnish and now if i pull this out i'll have that in a lumilaster with a 2k and the other one with a gloss black so this is really magical right um so the good thing about this is that these same pieces also work for the other kind of piece which is this one it is the same thing so it just goes over covers that right so you, you get the memo it's just uh i printed a lot of them so i wouldn't have to keep switching them you know between pieces um so it is really really useful so what i'm going to do is i'm going to place the the masking tools on the black pieces i'm going to do the illuminaster so you guys can see and i haven't perfected this yet uh but i think i've gone quite good at it uh not not perfect like uh, probably daryl or jackson or sam from imperial surface but i'm getting there you know so that's what matters um so yeah and while i do that uh daryl what, what are you gonna what are you gonna do are you gonna do some spoons yeah, I'm going I'm to do some spoons. I'm going to do a couple different opacities Hell of yeah. uh, the Duralumin Tough. Oh, yeah. Uh, this stuff uh, doesn't need to be cleared. It, nice. You can clear it, but you don't have to. All right. Works out really well. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I think it has like a... What's the name of the guy? The, the, the digital, digital Armory. What's, what's his name? Uh, digital Armory. Uh, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Uh, so Daniel, I think what he said once is that they there are some solvents in the uh in the paint in the in the dual element tough paint that react with the uh, with the other layers and that helps to, that bond and that's really interesting because mm -hmm. i've been doing something similar to where i i let that uh, 2k clear dry up to 85 percent not not mm -hmm. to, to fully and then i spray the all cloud or the aluminum and it sticks really well it doesn't like i do that for the for the finishing um yeah, for that finishing like little touch in fact i can show you really quick uh, this is the the test that i did um today um with a finished uh spun look and uh it's maybe it might be hard to see us turn this one on one more light there we go that burns that yeah so you see that there's that halo around the the highlight so it isn't it doesn't look like it's clear coated but it is and there's also those scratches that go around the cylinder 
So if you move that and piece. It, and, well, to, for me, too, to get uh, to achieve something like that, it's all about the, the application of the clear, too. Yeah, yeah well, that... You, know, you go on... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the Iron Man guys want to know, you know, how do I keep chrome chrome without it, you know, without me destroying the chrome look, the mirror finish uh, in my paint job? And I always ask, like, well, how do you apply your clear coat? Yeah. And nine times out of ten, they're like, oh, I just smash it on there yeah you know, no. well, that's your problem because yeah yeah people don't realize that chrome has fine aluminum flakes in it and what ends up happening is is that that clear coat that solvent pulls the aluminum out of that chrome base into the clear now it's all yeah grayed and muddied up and yeah. not as reflective it, as it once it, was it turns into like a gray like a shiny gray car paint you know like Yep. Pretty much. So it's really tricky. So what I do, a trick that can help if you have that going on, first of all, learn to apply the 2K perfectly. Uh, and thinning it down with the solvent is a really good step. It has helped me a lot. Uh, but when it's 80% dry, go over it with a metallic paint a little bit, like a little dusting of it. And it'll create that, it'll, it, it'll kill that plastic sheen and bring back that metallic. So it's like, you can go yep. to 70% opacity with that first layer before the 2K, and then go to that the rest of the that 30%, you know, the, that remaining 30%, um, when that is kind of almost dry, the 2K, and that way you have like a sandwich, so you get best of both worlds, to be honest, and that's yep. helped me yep. a lot. But yeah, that's the uh, spun, the finished. Uh, you can see still my my fingers in there, like it doesn't compromise the the mirror look, even though this is not a mirror, this is not chrome, this is, this is steel, um, or it's trying to be steel. But yeah, so that was a quick word on it. But yeah, um, I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the screen so they can see you painting spoons, and I'm gonna answer some questions. Mm -hmm. I might throw some. I think I'm gonna do some all clad too because uh, wonderful. I know you talked about it and people like the chrome. Yeah, so let's yeah, grab that bottle too. So the Wonder Gen asks, awesome. What's the best way for us to print those guards? As in guards? Do you mean the masking tools? Oh. Yeah, I think she means the masking tools because you were talking about it when that question yeah. popped up. Yeah, so these are printed in resin. Like you can get, like you can get um, a resin printer for so cheap nowadays. It's it's like two thousand. Sorry, two two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, so that's how I've printed all all these. But you can print this on FDM printers as well. Just make sure it goes slow and at least zero point one layer height. Um, and they'll print nicely, like it, they, they, they'll work really well. I know this because Faye tested it and they, she printed it and uh, yeah, they, they work really well. So I hope that answers your question. If it, that's not what you meant, please uh, ask again. Mm -mm. So let's get these stands going. Here we are. Uh, another comment was from Kelly. Yeah, Lady Cat uh, says this is amazing. This this work is stunning. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, thank you for all this support um, over the past year and something that I've known you. Yeah, she actually helped me a lot with the Black Widow baton. She she sent me a lot of reference pictures from magazines that she got, and that's how I was able to model them. So th thank you, thank you so much. Uh, for that, I really appreciate it. All right, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's put these things on their proper stands. Da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one where did I put my stand for this piece I can't remember maybe it's I love how your compressor sounds sounds like it's underwater <laughs> <laughs> it's always going off yeah which I probably a little light Mm 
Mm, 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 mm. I'm trying to find the stand for the. Did it did it fall over the the table? I don't think so. It'll it'll. I don't know how well people can see this, but this is the. Uh, oh yeah. This is like the 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 duck from probably like. Uh, is that Duralumin? Uh, yeah, that's Duralumin over like gloss black. Oh, amazing! I have super, super light opacity. Instead of killing it all the way with straight chrome. And then this is more of the full blast of what it looks like. Yeah. It still needs to be wiped off once it dries. You should take yeah, a hot yeah. cloth to wipe it down because of these dust particles behind. But yeah. that's the full opacity. Yeah, exactly. You have to yeah, wait a little bit. Either. And then softly with a with a t-shirt or a rag, get rid of the, those particles yep. at the top. That makes a whole difference. Yeah, Especially do that before you clear it. Because if you don't do that, <laughs> you'll ruin your effect. This is a Lumalaster. This was the fourth um, test that I did with the paint already cleared. It looks, and it also when you when you um, thin down the clear with solvent, it becomes a bit flexible. Look at it. <laughs> it's wonderful. So I'll do some all clad on this next You sound a bit like Bane. Um, could you speak up a little bit clearer? Because the, the the respirator sometimes. Um, it's the respirator. Yeah, yeah, but don't take it off. Don't take it off. Oh no, not with this stuff. No, no. Like imagine you're breathing resin. Like guys, please use the window, the respirator. Like think of it as it's it's part of the paint. You know, the respirator comes with the paint. I think uh, I have all the pieces with the stands, so this is good. We're gonna leave this for later. Leave this for later. Oh, shit. All right. So let's put the the masking tools on. There's there's one. I'm gonna have to clean these guys. All right. So oh, there it is. Oh, here. Gloves are also a really important thing when it comes to painting. Um, this way you don't get your oils, you know, the oils in your hand on, on the on the piece. So try not to do what I just did, which is I scratch my face. <laughs> Gloves and gloves. So, as far as Duralumin, how are you applying it? Um, for Duralumin, I do around 30 PSI. Mm -hmm. So, PSI, guys, is the pressure from the compressor. And uh, that 30 PSI is done in... I have the trigger pull probably a quarter of the way back when I'm applying it. Yeah, all right. So, it's a bit similar to Lumilaster. It's high pressure. Yeah, you don't go if you go full blast on it. You it, it just like yeah, it doesn't lay right. No, it doesn't. Um, so that we don't. Need, oh yeah, I'm gonna put this here. Uh, uh, uh. Do, 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 do. See if we have any questions. Henry, this is great to see. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'm so glad you enjoy it. It's it's so fun. Like uh. I was like, you know, I'm going to paint these and uh, I don't have the strength to record a, and edit a full tutorial. That's a lot of work. So I might as well just, you know, I might as well just uh, get some people into some fun live streams, you know, get this thing going, talk a little bit with you guys, you know, answer your questions. Um, yeah. It's just so much better. All right. So. I think I have all the masking tools applied. If I if we, if you forget about this stage, you have to start all over again. So just making sure. Oh no! I think that's it. It's all it's all good. All right. So I'm gonna turn my compressor on. I'm gonna turn the fan on. Um, there might be a little bit extra noise, but uh, you know, that's okay. Yeah, buddy. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -mm. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm gonna be using Alumalasta. This is the expensive, uh, but really incredible paint from Imperial Surface. Um, Very expensive, yeah. but worth it. Yeah, they paint this, they use this to paint, um, they use this to paint um, the Iron Man suits, any metallic paint in Legacy Effects. Uh, in also in England and the as well. And Mandalorian armor, the yeah, best car. Yeah, they use that. So yeah, it's 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 worth learning, you know. All right. So I'm gonna. I want to blow yourself back up. <laughs> yeah. So they can see you. So, you shake it a little bit, you know, uh, to kind of mix all the all the little particles. And da -da -da -da. I have my tear drop thing, whatever this is, like sample, uh, whatever. Same name in Photoshop. And uh, yeah, so basically, Daryl's gone. I'm going to explain this to you. High pressure. So we, we're looking at. 50 psi or almost four bars in the international system so there's a little uh, thing i'll show you there's a little tap here that you can turn and that ups the pressure and this goes down so yeah right right there and yep and now to load up the paint i'm going to clean the airbrush first it's important before you start with any paint clean it it's like the first step. Instead of cleaning it at the end, think of it that way. You're cleaning the airbrush. Also, I'm going to be using a little piece of uh, toilet paper or kitchen paper. And uh, you can you can hold this and press it against the the nozzle of the airbrush. I, I explained this uh, yesterday, but just that just cleans it. It pushes that air back in. Oh, there we go. And uh, it just uh, cleans it. So, good practice. All right. So, that is done. And now to load up the paint. Don't ever lift the, the open bottle up. It might, it might, it might slip and it might fall. So don't do that. I'm gonna load up the the the, the cup here. Chromy goodness, baby. And then I go to this one, which has a little bit of acetone. Clean it up, and then put it right here. Mm -hmm. So instantly, I'm closing this because it just evaporates. So. <laughs> You don't want to, you don't want to waste those two hundred and fifty euros on on paint that you that, that you that you bought, you know. So, um, so again, if you hold it, uh, if you hold, just push the button here. That just uh, just just spits air, right? So you can use the air to clean the piece. Oh, see, I ruined that. I pulled because I'm used to it. All right. Look at that. So I'm going to clean this one second. Stay there a little bit faster. I'll clean you with a little bit of IPA. And we'll be good to go. Or even a little bit of acetone. See? There's always... There we go. There's always room for a fuck up. All right. I don't know how I'm going to be able to to fix that. I might start with the other one. Yeah, let's leave that for maybe for tomorrow. No pressure. Yeah, that was that's too much pressure. So that's why too much. Okay. That's better. So basically, 
you blow the air out. All right. Try and get rid of those particles. There. And we're going to do a lot of air, a little paint. So, this is like a dance. You pull, and then a little bit, a little bit backwards, and then instantly blow some air. That will help push those particles into the, into the piece. So look, you can barely see it, but I am using the paint. It's like boom, and then go back, air, paint, air, paint, air, paint, air, right? That's how you do it. So, paint, air, paint, air, paint, air. Always this. And you kind of repeat this process uh, throughout the whole piece. And you go to the next one. So, paint, air, paint, air. That air is pushing those particles in. It's like a little dance. Can you guys see a little bit now? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Focus, camera, focus, there we go. All right. Paint air. Yep. <laughs> paint air. Yeah, the paint the paint air is like you're you're force drying that layer of paint as you're applying it yep. to the piece. Exactly. Which uh, is it's technique, but it, it's really important with chromes just to be able to get it to dry so you can layer it and give it you know more of a realistic sheen. Yeah, because if you don't do that. The, the next uh, particles will lay on top and they won't be like flushed with the surface. So y yesterday there was a question that popped up. I can't remember who asked it, but it was, what's the hardest challenge for you as a maker? And the Fay and I said, time, time constraints. We want to we wanna clone ourselves and just do more things, you know? What's the hardest challenge for you? For me? Yeah, yeah, for you. <laughs> As a maker. Oh, so you're asking me what's the hardest thing for me as a maker? Yeah, yeah, what's the hardest um, challenge? Like, what's the... Time is one of them. Um, I, I've, been, I've been kind of trying to, like, manage my time a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um as far as like even like organizing so if i'm organized and i know where things are um i know you look in the camera and you see behind me and it looks like shambles because it kind of is it's like i'm still setting up my garage yeah. the way that i want it for everything that i do i mean behind the cameras all my printers and yeah for the videos two and more workbenches and everything for you know yeah i'm trying to set everything up so it's more um contain for YouTube videos and tutorials and things like that. But then I also have things staged where I know that they are. Yeah. Um, so that helps out. That helps out with time a lot with me is just making sure that I'm organized. Yeah. Um, Cause if I'm spending, you know, five, five minutes, every half hour looking for something, I mean, that, that time adds up, you know, that's five minutes of each half hour yeah. that I could have been applying to a project that I'm working on or something like that. Um, and then I guess the other thing, uh, uh, time is a good one. That's yeah. a, real, it's a real good one. It's, it's hard to kind of think of anything outside of that. Um, I guess it would just, other than that, would just be like resources, man. I mean, oh. you know, there's not a lot of resource or information out there. And the information, it's kind of the reason why I started YouTube. Yeah. So I could just give you guys and all viewers um, like a direct line to how you're supposed to do something. Or at least in my mind, yeah. how you're supposed to do something. 
because I feel like a lot of YouTubers or people in the RPF or Facebook groups or Instagram, or Twitter, wherever they are, they leave steps out intentionally. Yeah. And kind of like geek. And JT, uh, JD, to answer your question, it's just water in my cup and hot in my garage. <laughs> right now. Yeah, I should get, I should get my dress level last water. night. Well, yeah, it's just, I, I, you know, I like to be able to streamline that. You know, like, the, the reason I did the gold tutorial even was because there was all this bickering in the yeah. Iron Man Builders Facebook group about what's the best gold, what's the best gold, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't have an HVLP set up. I don't have this. I don't have that. And, yeah, there's a lot of rattle cans that you can use. You can tint clear coat. I mean, you could take your, like, a lot of people use aqua gloss. Yeah. Um feel their chrome i don't like aqua gloss me neither I hate because it. it leaves it a little it takes the shine away now if yeah. i was going to do a piece that needed the shine to be dulled yeah i'll use aqua gloss yeah but the one that i recommend yeah. <laughs> to everybody now is the uh gloss clear coat from krasex no k-l-e-a-r-k-o-t-e i'll clad this stuff is amazing oh uh, yeah the, the clear, clear coat stuff. yeah yeah, I haven't That's tried it yet. Anything. Other than two, other than two K, two K is probably like the best yep. way to go. Solvent based is always going to be superior. But I posted that video because I just wanted to show people like, yo, there's a technique that you guys are missing out on. Yeah, and it's fairly inexpensive and quick and dirty, and you can get a really believable gold uh, look to your prop without mixing food colors or using uh, a, a candy concentrate or something like that yeah 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 that's great in fact yesterday i brought my my version of of the gold finish there we go. here it is now let's see if i can catch all that light and uh this is the pirates of the caribbean medallion this is washed with the with, with the games workshop and it's just it is by far the most durable finish i've ever tried like it doesn't go off now this is a this is like a graphite rub but Instead of um, doing it directly on a black gloss, I do that, but I don't let that clear coat dry completely. Again, I go to 85% cured, and it just sticks like an MF, like there's nothing like it. And it, it looks incredible, yep. like, because this has a lot of texture, but if it was smooth, you'll flip out, like it's just so good. Uh, maybe. Oh yeah, if it was smooth, you'd see all the reflectivity in it. Yeah, like if look at my finger there, you can see my finger the there. Faceplate of my rescue helmet. Yeah, it's pr pretty similar to that. Yeah. So that's like a different method, you know, people need to experiment us and research and ask other people and, and then make up their own conclusions, you know, just experiment and see. And see for yourself, you know, otherwise you're never going to know. You know? Yep, it's all about experimentation. I mean, yeah. uh, I have a, a paint video coming out this week, this coming week or Wrecker's helmet from the Bad Batch that I used a lot of new techniques on that I didn't cover in the video because yeah. I think that it would be better thought if I just did it with a spoon. Mm -hmm. You know, like me and you were talking earlier about um, just some of the different techniques. It's, 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 you know, mess around with stuff and see what works. Yeah. So I've been experimenting with, you know, stripping different kind of paint off of other kind of paint to give realistic chipping and weather. Oh, yeah. You know, effects. We're going to do some chipping. I'm going to paint a few of these uh, clear coat. And, uh, and then we get to the pieces that are already dry that I have there. And we can get to adding all the layers. So uh, Kelly asked, how, how do I know, how do we know when the piece is covered enough in metallic paint? So you definitely don't want to lose that black depth, that like those, uh, those darker areas in the, of the reflections. That's really important. You don't want to lose that because otherwise it's just going to look more like a can, like a spray can. So um, you don't want to lose that. So I go about until it's like a like a polished steel look, which is darker than aluminium. And then I clear coat it and then I go over again a little bit when that clear coat is 85% dry with a little bit more of, of, the, of the metallic paint. But it's, it just goes by feel. And uh, lighting. Lighting is super important. important yeah. in, uh, 
in your paint area. So like I have like this ring light over here. I have another one yeah. to my left, which would be your right if you're looking at the screen. Um, yeah. Lighting is super important, especially with chromes, because I mean it's easy to just you're thinking you're not putting it down because you might be in a darker, oh, yeah. not well lit area, but you are. You're 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 laying it on there. So lighting is another super important thing in in any spray setup. I think. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to duplicate, you know, metallic looks or anything of color, really, so you're not oversaturating the part. Yeah, you always go a little bit under. Try to go a bit under what you want. That's the key, because you can always add more, but never take, never take away. So. Yep. Paint, uh, paint, uh, it's a dance, baby. It's like. It's it's minimal the amount of paint that comes out with each part. Mm -hmm. Some from yeah, uh, it's to get shiny. oh yeah, some from Imperial Surface would be proud of me now. Like what you are learning and teaching us, the use of luminous what? <laughs> there we go. I like where that's going. So I'm going to paint two more of these. You can go faster with it, you know. The more paint you put, the the more, at least with the Luminaster, the more of a flaky effect you're going to have. That's why you have to go little by little. With our cloud, the particles are, uh, are a bit smaller, so it just goes on so good. But the problem with our cloud is it doesn't take the 2K as well, the clear coat, as a little bit less of dust. It's crazy how well that takes the clear coat. It's that's why I'm well, using I think it. If I have any 2K clear coated all class parts laying around, I have a few spoons, but I can't remember which ones they were. And uh, yeah, I can't. I can't either. I'm like, but oh, it looks like what did I paint that like with? a car? You know, it's just. I was looking at my Mando helmet, and I was like, nope, wait, that was uh, a little luster. Yeah. <laughs> And so was the... No, that... No, uh, Bobo wasn't... No, that was Dura Lumen. Ah, never mind. The nine pieces of each from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. I, I like this one. I'm not going to oh. make more from Pirates. I don't think so. But, um... Yeah. Some, uh, some other question here. So, late comments. Who is Earth? Earth? Yes, so Daryl of Earth is a good friend of mine. He's been painting for, for, for a long time now, um, for a few years, and he does incredibly good, incredibly well done paint jobs, like whatever you, you name it. He just, he's just good at, he's good at a lot of things because he tries everything, and that's the key. And also you have to follow him, so you'll get to know him a little bit more because you have to follow him if you want to enter the giveaway. So do that. Do it on Instagram. Yeah, my name is my name is Daryl. Uh, I go by Offer. I am a um, just a guy with a high school diploma and a passion for replica props and paint. Yeah, yeah. I fancy myself an alchemist with paint, and I just like to have fun with this stuff, man. It's just uh, it's, it's it's therapy for me, you know. I don't. If something greater came of this, that would be fantastic. I'd take it in a heartbeat. But right now, I'm happy in my garage doing my little commissions, building my cosplay stuff, and uh, helping my friends. Yeah. You know, I talk to Henry on a regular basis. Yep. We bounce ideas off each other uh, just to see, you know, if I'm, he might want to test something and bounce the idea off of me, and I've already messed with it. I go, oh, man, yeah, try this or yeah, yeah. whatever, and vice versa. So it, it, it always helps. Yeah, like the yeah, Daniel. Who doesn't have a passion for it, right? It is a great thing. Yeah, it's just there's nothing more relaxing. Even with the with the respirator on, I'm still so comfortable. You know, like I'm in my cloud. Yeah. You know, there's no there are no distractions. It's just it's just nice. It's like a meditation. You know, my girlfriend will kill me if I say that again, but because she does yoga. <laughs> This is nothing like a meditation, but I it is relaxing, paint, you know. I need to paint me on there now. Yeah. Where are we at? 
That's you, that's you. So yesterday, I in fact clear coated at the end and I showed how to do it. Um, I might, yeah, let's, how much time, in fact, how much time do we have left and how much time do you have? Because I can go on and on and on, but you know, I don't even know how, how long we've been here for, to be honest. Uh, what did it say, 80 minutes? Oh, okay. So we've got a little bit more time. Um, in fact, yeah. I'm going to stop uh, applying the Luba Laster for now. I'm going to leave those pieces for, for next uh, Saturday for the uh, live stream in Spanish that I have. I just remembered that I can't paint all of them with a the luminaster. All right, just this one more to kind of end, uh, finish the paint here. I have printed extra mandible pieces because um, what if one of them breaks, I can just replace it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap this one spoon with the Copic. Yeah, let me give you the... Idea of the of the gold, even yeah. though it's the color is a, a light camel. And if you look at it, it's kind of this like really light tan and you wouldn't think that it would cover chrome the way that it does for uh, a gold effect. But it does, that's amazing. Let's do this one. Oh. A little more. Also, I want to give a shout out to, to Daniel. Um, he was a good friend of mine. He has also have a, has a YouTube channel and a Patreon. And uh, he also likes to experiment, you know. So shout out to you, man. He did a series of videos on my ultra detailed stone breaker, uh, like a year ago or something like that. So yeah. Also, shout out to my girlfriend who is in the chat right now, Brittany. <laughs> I just said yoga and she came. <laughs> Amazing. Super gold. And Yorick is here with us, isn't he? Let's see. Let's do, 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 do. Dude, the gold looks so good. It's crazy. You see that black depth is still there. Probably one of my favorites is the gold. And just let this good old alcohol ink flash, and then you can clear it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Hey, broken nerd! Hey, broken nerd! Hey, Daryl, how you doing, man? Daryl. Oh, Daryl. Yeah. What up? I love him. Like, guys, if you haven't subscribed to Daryl's channel, the Broken Nerd. He makes insanely good quality videos and he tests a lot of things too, like new machines and, and uh, paints and things. Amazing guy. I also 
I love his genuine smile. It's crazy. It's so contagious. I'm watching the videos on like... What Daniel say? I've used the red base coat for the for gold before. Does this technique change at all? Uh, if you approach it with that in mind or no? Uh, well, with this technique, if you're basically applying something that is going to give you a realistic gold look over chrome. Uh, I haven't done it with a red. I mean, I have red alcohol ink here. I could probably tint it a little bit with the red or throw a little red over the chrome first and see what what happens. I mean, we can experiment. We're all, we're here. We might as well mess with it. Let's see what happens. So we'll take the uh, cadmium red. What oh, Daryl say? Glad to see y'all collab. Love it. Yeah, buddy. You're next. You're coming yeah, to yeah, collab with us next. Definitely. If I can find a way to like get two people in, that would be fantastic. Right? Yeah. But definitely, oh, yeah. I look forward to uh, making this sort of thing with, with Daryl. He's amazing. Let's see if we can make that gold more gold. So we'll oh, yeah, that's right. Because it's shine here. We'll throw some of this red over here. There's a tent, base tent over the chrome. A little bit. We'll make it a little rosy. Maybe it'll be like a rose gold. I like mm -hmm. that looks like right there. Oh, beautiful. We'll do this. A rosy rose. And we'll throw more of the gold over there. Hold on. Let's see an airbrush. A camel. And the great thing about alcohol inks is you can just clean them right out of your airbrush with uh, some IPA. Yeah. Yeah, exactly like it's alcohol based. Yep. Yep, I just put a little bit in there, do a little backflow. Flat the nozzle, move it around. And then knock off any excess inside with the old paintbrush. And then just dump it. I just cleaned the uh, the the dust particles of the Lumilasta off the uh, of the pieces that I just uh, painted. And now you can see like the mirror chrome is crazy good and you can see the imperfections as well. So that's going to be uh, the first uh, the first layer of aluminum that I'm going to be using. I'll clear coat these in in just a bit. Or maybe maybe not because I did that yesterday. I'm going to jump in directly to the other, to the other pieces. Show you the masking tools and stuff. That sounds good, yeah? Oh, look. Ooh, this is beautiful. Yeah, wonderful. Oh. Da, 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 da. All right, I'm going to put these guys. All right, a little bit more. It's a different effect. I think it's just because of the two inks and the transparency. Maybe. Between the two. I've seen people do this with like food coloring where they take a red and a yellow. And yeah, in fact, I'm going to paint this. Paint. I'm going to paint the disc. I forgot about the disc and I want to see how it looks after the, uh, the we'll scratches. Just a little bit. Let's see. Let's paint the disc. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, we're both like painting really cool stuff out. Uh, da, 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 da. This gold is just way richer. It's more of a rose gold, I would, I would say. Yeah. Over the red. So, or even like a sunburst. I don't know, maybe like a really shiny brown. That's the result of the red over the gold. And the gold over the chrome. Pretty cool. I like that color. Actually, that's wonderful. You you actually answered uh, Daniel's question. Oh man, that looks. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That looks amazing. That looks so good. Like yeah, I want like, that hey, one. I'm here. I have the stuff out. Let's do I it. I try. I try to do that with the with the with the with the lightsaber, man. Like 
I look so much better than what I got. <laughs> Yeah, we just made a custom color here. Daniel Gold. We have a lot of like spe speckles here like on the it. disc, but whatever. You know. We'll see how that looks. If not, I'll print another one or whatever. This is beautiful. Oh. Mm -hmm. Are we still spraying uh, Luma Lux? Yeah, over there, I forgot about the disc, so I'm going to try and see what it looks like. Almost like a copper. I don't know. I don't know what color this. I is. like it. That like little reddish. But I, gold. I think if I went a little, I think this would look sweet if you took uh, if you did like an edge highlight. So you have your 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 base your base spoon or prop that is chrome. Yeah. Um, and then you take that red and maybe go around the edges. Oh yeah. Just kind of deepen the edges. So then you could take the gold in the middle and kind of fade it out to that yeah, yeah, color. Yeah, so exactly. Start with a darker, yeah, like a darker contrast of that. Yeah, that looks so good always. Like, um, like uh, fades and um, what's it called? Uh, gradients. Yep. This a uh, uh, piece that Derek uh, Rosengrant did. The Civil War, the Falcon suit, and I've got a few reference images. Um, and uh, and it just looks so good, it's just exactly that technique. Uh, yeah, Daryl, this is uh, Lumilasta. I'm still not 100% uh, perfect using it. This piece is kind of fucked up like this. I scratch it too hard there. <laughs> but I'm just testing to see what it looks like on the disc. I also have, I need a yeah, proper gun, yeah. like a paint gun. With smaller pieces. Yeah, warmth is definitely what it does. It definitely has a warmth to it. Yeah, and like the smaller pieces, they look fantastic. But um, the big pieces, it's hard for me to do an even coverage, you know. But yeah, guys, subscribe to Daryl's channel, uh, The Broken Nerd. Does amazing videos. Oh, what'd you say? Oh yeah, Luma Luster is amazing. Yeah, if you guys don't uh, are subscribed to the Broken Nerd, make sure you go do that on YouTube, the Instagrams, and the Twitters. Yeah. Um, if you want to see some interesting, amazing, and unique pieces? Yeah. That's where you go. Not a lot of the same also, stuff that you see everybody yeah, else doing. Yeah. He does a lot of yeah things that a lot of people aren't doing. And also, huge shout out to you, Daryl, because. Your 3D models, man, they're spectacular. Like, as a fellow 3D artist, I can appreciate that, like, hardcore. There's something else. There's something else. Oh, I gotta go get, I gotta get my blender life together. Yeah. To <laughs> figure that program out all the way. Well, I'm close, I'm getting there. Yeah, I don't use Blender, I use 3DS Max. Uh, the license yeah. is like 360 per year or something. Um, but Blender is free. But I'm sure, like, it's the same things, just different keyboards. You know, just different, uh, different keys and different shortcuts and different interface. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like you, since I've been editing videos in DaVinci Resolve, like I could probably jump into a program like Final Cut. Yeah. And figure it out because I have, you know, baseline everything that I need to do for my videos and DaVinci kind of mapped out. I know how everything works. So jump into another program probably wouldn't be that big of a problem. Yeah. Uh, I started out modeling in Fusion, but there's just so many steps to make something like, I don't know, like a, a replica of like a gun from Halo or something hmm. like that is like a pain in the ass in Fusion 360 for me. It just, it doesn't click and Blender does, but I'm still just, you know, navigating it when I can, playing around, messing with seeing what I can come up with. 
Yeah. Slow burn. Blender has uh, had a few huge updates, and in fact now other companies are copying from Blender. Mm. Yeah, Blender just dropped the update, I think, like today or oh, yesterday, wow. I want to say, when I jumped on YouTube, but one of the top recommended videos was, hey, check out this new Blender yeah. update. And I was like, oh, I'm, I should probably download that, and I'll play with it next month. Yeah. Good thing that it's free. I also have resin everywhere. Was, yeah, the uh, disc's looking I'm good, man. Right? Like... I'm going to start selling these on Etsy. They're... Uh, Filled uh, urethane resin smooth on pieces. <laughs> you guys are your true talent. Ah, Daryl, you're, you're, you're a sweet man. Sweet heart, man. <laughs> Daniel said the disc looks great now. As far as the sheen goes, you can see the airbrush in it. Oh, the streak. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess your, your, your turning technique. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and you'll see, like, this is just the first stage. So you'll see after the clear and then a little bit of um, with the luminoster on top you know uh, you'll see how that kind of boom pops but yeah let's 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 turn to the uh, masking tools hell yeah the moment I was waiting for to show you guys so um, bu -bu -bu. I have these pieces uh, and also these pieces all right so because uh, I already kind of brushed on, pardon me, the pun, uh, the masking tools. Um, so these are already cleared. So I'm going to make sure I I separate these <laughs> so I can tell them apart because they look the same because the clear reacts so well on the on the Lumilaster that it just looks this exactly the same. So um, what I'm going to do is these are already dry. I'm going to there we go. I'm going to take off oh, easy. Oh, look at that clean line. See? The power of the masking tools. And uh, I'm going to put these guys here and I'm going to start placing the other kind of tools, which are these guys to cover the lip here. Cover also the lip, the tube and the lip. Right? To fix that here, I'm going to put a little blue tack. Right there. And also the other one. Oh, yeah, perfect. Because that has to go in down here so that it doesn't it doesn't go down. And the other one goes on top. Yep, and I should have made it go down a little bit a little bit further. And also now we have a different uh, kind of masking tool, which is this. Um, this goes on the sides, right? And it has uh, two little flap things that help you kind of place it on there and they won't fall. So that's how it goes. Boom. And that covers uh, that black uh, scratched metal. In fact, I'm going to pull the, the material studies again. Uh, uh, uh. I haven't yet, but I plan on it soon for cosplay and working. Ah, you know, I'm gonna go to my material studies. So, it is called uh, Scratched Painted Steel. Um, that's a good introduction. <laughs> so basically, this is fear. Uh, that will, will know what this is. It's just a material in 3D. What we're seeing on the right is the color information. This is a bit over the top, So, but I just want you to imagine that the the, the, the batons, you know, that last layer on the top have like a, like a, like an oxidized coating, like a matte black, which they use a lot for guns and weapons and things like that. So we're going to be painting, except from the tube and the lip, we're going to be painting the rest of it black. But because there are scratches, we're going to be masking with the masking fluid, some of the edges. We're not going to overdo this. It's just going to be a little bit. It's not going to be like my sample tests. So um, that. So um, we're going to be using just a toothpick, or you can even use steel wool a little bit on some spots if you're going to accent those. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do that, and then I'll show you. Oh, of course, the the roughness map. 
would be this one and I know it's kind of crazy um, but you'll see that the scratches are darker so that means the the metal underneath is smoother and therefore shinier and the white is the actual black part okay let's go back to the cameras and I'm just going to show you how, uh, how I mask off the edges and, and things that you can quickly pick up on this so I, I take a another cut take this cup for example and uh, my toothpick no, not this one, a different one and this is like a classic uh, this is not, this is not hard to do, it's just masking, but a bit more organically. But um, basically, um, mm -mm, I want to accent cause these, these pieces, hang on, these pieces go up like this, like so. So this is the upper, the upper edge and this is the lower one. So I have to make sure, you know, um, that I know the difference. Because when you assemble them, you know, top is top and bottom is bottom. So I, I, want to, I want to try and make a, a, a cool story, you know, like some weathering but not over the top, so it kind of tells a story. Uh, it doesn't stretch the silicone. Ah, yeah, urethanes. Ah, that's a really good, that's a really cool talk. Yeah, we should do live streams about urethanes and flexible stuff. Yeah, I need to mold some pieces. I'm waiting for like the smooth on task 16 to get back into stock but uh, the silicone shortage has been murdering yeah. <laughs> some projects that I've been wanting to do. It's like, oh, I gotta wait. Oh, I gotta wait. Come on, guys. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, I understand, Daniel. It's kind of hard to under like explain the properties of urethanes and silicone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you have the show. Or and... you gotta show off. Yeah. All right. That's, ooh, that's probably... Too much. I'm just gonna do there. See, just doing a little bit. I'm not going over the top with it. Like it's, it's just a little bit. Like that's even probably too much. Because when you put all the pieces together, if you go over the top, it's gonna show. It's like it's gonna look too hom homogeneous. The, the noise, you know, the the scratches and things, and and the chipping, it's gonna look too 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 much of the same thing. You know, you want to create some difference. So I'll definitely be uh, bidding up some uh, some uh, some pieces, you know, like um, towards the end of the baton. Probably they'll have more more chipping, you know, because that's what she hits with. I'm guessing, you know. So uh, so yeah, just uh, getting in there and uh, creating some. Let's see if the camera can focus there creating a story you know and this thing dries you know it, it, it dries with the air so it dries on pretty fairly quickly just be careful if you go over an area because you can pull it uh, off you know but yeah you can go over the over the edges and see that's starting to dry this one here That's where I put my hands to the test because they're naturally shaky. <laughs> so. Oh, then you get naturally good chipping. Then. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right, this is the first piece. And this is already clear. It's crazy, like the sheen, the the, the, the reflections. Oh man, love this paint. Like, Luminaster is so good. It's one of the best out there. Yeah. So you can't touch the the uh, inner areas because that material is actually a different coating and it is a coating that prevents it from rusting scratches. It's called diamond like carbon coating. You guys should try PT Flex. 
it's industry standard, really great stuff. Like a urethane? PT Flex. Who makes that, Daryl? Is that uh, Poly? Poly Props or BJB? Huh. Amazing. Really moving my arm, that's really moving really sick, and it can flip inside out. <laughs> I love that video, man. So this already had the mask and didn't it? Yeah, it did. It's getting, getting tricky to kind of tell which pieces uh, have masking, which don't. Which don't. All right, this one. So I'm... Poly tech, okay. Da, 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 da. I'm about to look it up right now, baby. Yeah. Oh, they have a bunch of different options. Too. Yeah, nice. What's on there? What's on the menu today? PT Flex Series are fast setting, rapid deep mold polyurethane systems developed specifically for prototyping and model making applications. Hey girl, whoa, this shit is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder it's industry standard. Oh yeah. I'll pull this up, it's like PT Flex liquid rubber. Uh, and they only come in 80 pound kits and they are $600 US, so $595. Uh -huh. So this this is a uh, RTV urethane rubber, and they have different shore hardnesses. Uh, they have 85, 70, 60, 50, and 20. 20 would be, I think, what, your softest? Yeah, 10 is the skin armor. So 60 is pretty good, yeah? 40 normally for urethane Here's up with it's like... Uh, suit like a suit like oh a this suit. is okay so i probably you can probably buy this stuff from a uh imperial surface oh maybe too. if if what daryl was saying it pairs up with imperial flex which is their oh, imperial uh, flex. Imperial flexible flex, system yeah. for chrome amazing all right that yep let's do that all right i think i have masked all those already again i'm not going to uh I'm not going to apply masking fluid on these ones because this material is the one that has the specific coating that's like a matte grey and it is, it prevents scratches, it is like hard like diamond it's called diamond like carbon coating for steel so you can google that, it's really interesting, I was doing a lot of research on it and um, I was blown away and I was like, you know, this makes sense uh, for the batons because, you know, we have hardly any reference you know, besides the references that uh, Kelly sent me but there's no really intricate shots of them, you know, on the on the magazine. So I had to came out with a story and therefore like the materials and things based off the shades of grey and, and, you know, on the posters. So that's it uh, for the masking fluid. All right. I didn't want to overdo that. Definitely not. Uh, you can always scratch a little bit if you feel like you need to of uh, the of the black. And now we're going to cover that black. No, we're going to cover that Alumilaster with black uh, from our clad. So, and then we're going to do a matte clear coat. So, again, just making sure that we have the masking tools on. Because if we don't... So let's cover the lip. Because the, I'm not going to cover that, that uh, diamond-like carbon coating material because I need that black base. So I model the masking tools, you know, considering that already. That's the great thing about mirroring the 3D modeler as well. I don't, know. I don't well. know if you guys can see this, but this is a kind of an example of what he's going to be showing. Yeah. Uh, on this helmet, this Wrecker helmet. It's it's based in Duralumin, uh, and then I went over it with a uh, carbon black. Where'd that paint go? I don't know. It's around here somewhere. It's carbon black. It's a, it's a uh -huh. flat black or matte black uh, acrylic. And then I just strip that off with a paintbrush and some acrylic thinner to reveal the sealed chrome underneath. Yeah, that's it. And I have that going all the way around the edges here. Just to give you an idea. Yeah, that's it. It looks beautiful, man. 
I, I'm saying it with delay because I'm, I'm on the YouTube tab, but that looks wonderful. Oh, I found it. Here's the carbon black paint. It was fitting it in front of me. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. One that goes there, covers the lip so wonderfully well. So proud of these little boys, little boys and girls. All right. And this is just, you know, different ways. He's doing it with a gloss black and he's going to matte clear it. Yeah, um, I don't have a matte black. What he ha because of what he has available, yep. right? Like, so I have more acrylics and stuff available than Henry has. So he's going about it a different way, but he's going to yep. achieve the same effect, essentially, through his method. Yeah. And through my method, it, it would look the same. Yeah, exactly. And I was, I was going to do, before I tested it, and then I changed my mind at the very last minute. I was going to do the same like pebbled effect that, that Daryl did on the Star Wars on the Knights of Ren video with Adam Savage, the pebbled effect on the black. But I think it was too much for the batons, so I, I ended up. And also because of the research I did, I was like, maybe that'll be a little bit too much for these ones. If it was like a bigger surface, like the helmet that he painted, I think it would work really well. But for these guys, maybe not so much. But I, I love that effect. I tried it on a, on a scrap piece. Of, of of Thor's hammer and that I have um, and uh, yeah it's just wonderful 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 and yeah so let's start covering those guys too I have my ma my magic box here with all the masking tools. All right. So I just you know, get down and get some get some tools. All right. Uh, oh, this one. Du, 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 du. Yeah, this one. Yeah, well, this goes on there. I love how when you start adding the masking tools to them because they're printed in gray resin you can definitely see that chrome contrast yeah, exactly and how much that uh how much that uh aluma luster is really popping up <laughs> yeah yeah you can mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. give me some Daryl said he loves masking tools yeah i need to get hit man y'all yeah, just see i'm learning some stuff today I, I know i have all these files and i can print this and be like yeah masking tools. yeah Daryl, like if you i'm still an and along with the tape. <laughs> yeah, like it just takes one second, boom. It just covers it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the best ideas I've ever had, like to be honest, when it comes to painting props. It's just so easy. And like, because Daryl, you can model big masking tools and print with a resin printer, you know, just like a really fast uh, prints and stuff. Or maybe just on FDM prints. You don't want to waste uh, resin on those, yeah. But um, yeah, they're just easy to put on and off you know it's just easy to model too like it's just getting the same faces yeah getting rid of all the extra polygons extracting like shooting that, those outwards um it's really not that complicated to, to model so da, 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 da. And those there too <laughs> and i think let's see let's see all right so for these guys I need this one here. Yeah, it's a, it's a super brilliant idea. I mean, it's, and since you got that nice pressure fit to it, you won't really have to worry about too much bleed, I would imagine. Yeah, and uh, there we go. Oh no, I broke it. There we go. Let's get a piece of uh, some pliers to get that out. Da, 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 da. That's the thing with FDM, it's easily breakable. Uh, Dude, I'm over tape masking too. I'm working on this uh, Darth Nihilus mask that I got from uh, Marco. Yeah. Uh, MMMM Mystery on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And I had to tape off that center detail in the middle of that mask, and I was just like, oh my uh, God. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> the, this, the masking tools would have helped so much with that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I have to back mask all the white parts that I painted so I can get to that and black it and chrome it and gold it. So it's like, ugh. Yeah. All right. 
There's that. Mm -hmm. So I need, oh, two more here. Perfect. One. These guys. It, 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 isn't it crazy that this is cleared aluminum? I'm just still baffled by it. It's crazy. I don't oh. think spraying aluminum luster gets old. Yeah, it's so good. This will never age, like it's just gonna be a standard forever. Yeah, there are great uh chrome or I guess you could say more affordable chroming alternatives, but there it there's nothing like aluminum luster, especially when that solvent flashes and you're looking at it and you watch the way that it settles on the part. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Now, I mean, I've sprayed spastics, Duralumin, um, all clad, various other different companies and brands. Vallejo has metal metal colors that I've used. Yeah. Um, that metal cast stuff out of the can from Duplicolor, and it's just there's nothing like the way yeah. Duralumin lays. Oh, it's just so. It's just like I got it on on the first hour of trying like. Not that really complex to learn. Mm -mm -mm. All right, there's another one. I think, let's see. Now I'm going to line them all up because, oh, here. That's where it gets tricky. Yeah, they, these are the ones that have the, the chips. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest thing about them because, like, if you print just two of them, you can just swap them every time you paint a new piece. And you know that you're not going to forget any of them. But if you did like me, and then I printed all of them, and a few more, you have to make sure that they're all that they're on all of the pieces. So, those are good. That one's good. All right, I think we're good. Let's get rid of these for now. All right. So, some blue tack for this one. It's really important too the way that I that I place the piece, and the the the, uh, the orientation, because this one will, will fall down. But you can you can put a little blue tack on this one, and um, and this way, oh the hammer, and this way it w it, w it won't go anyway. Oh, I should have I should have uh, chromed the the pommel. Ah, I'll do that later on. Chrome plating, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I think we're good. I'm just gonna start putting the uh, the blue tack on these guys. Can we get next on your journey? As a cream plating. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. What you just said, man. That thing is just a real thing, right? Although I'm pretty happy with my uh, brushed uh, or spun steel look <laughs> to be honest I'm, I'm really happy about that like i, I feel accomplished da, 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 da. oh man get on there mm -hmm. i need the magic of editing when it's a video to kind of like do this all in one second <laughs> i haven't figured out that part yet but i will just need super speed, you know. That's all. Right time lapse in real life. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this one. I hate blue type, but sometimes it comes in handy. All right. It sticks to the gloves. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Super speed on paint drying off that right? Yeah, yeah. Indeed. That's why I like uh, solvents, because you can put them in front of infrared. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. So, guys, uh, what's the hardest challenge for you as a maker? Guys, people on the on the chat. 
Let's see what they say. Hardest challenge is the maker. Let us know in the chat. I want to know what everybody else has to say about their hardest challenges as a maker. Yeah, I really want to do the Illuminus on these guys. Uh, but I think uh, we're good with the with the thing with the uh, blue tank. So I'll put it away. These guys away too. I don't need these guys either. I might need. Yeah, I need the stands. I do need them. I do need them. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, not necessary, but yeah, they come in handy. All right. One, two, three, four. Another one here. But definitely, yeah, the masking tools is a game changer for me. Like, I can't go back now. I'm gonna, on the stands as well, and like the tools for cleaning the spinning, the, the spun look. But so that doesn't really exist. Getting started or something, doing that is so hard. Yep, you said it. Yep. Sometimes, like, we create blocks for, for ourselves that don't really need to be there. I have to go one brain block. Mm. Yeah. Let's put the black on top. All right. I'm I'm gonna be done with this bottle of black really soon. I've got another one though. So it's all good. It's all good. Oh, should I quickly illuminate this? I will. I will. I want to see the pommel all chromed up. Okay, guys, sorry. Uh, we're good. Yeah, like, I want to do it. I'm, I'm sorry about it, but I, I have to. I can't go to bed without doing this. You know, it's just, it's calling me. Now, where is... Mm -mm, here. I have to, you know, it's just... It's calling me. All right. Does everyone have any more challenges as a maker that they want to share? Da, da, da. All right. Oh yeah, let's see how 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 this looks. Let's fucking zoom in. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Oh, already seeing it. So beautiful. Mm. Oh, yeah, I definitely feel that one, Daniel. Messing around with different uh, Can you materials and things aren't going the way that you thought they were going to. Yeah. I still find my, I still find that when I mess around with casting resins and stuff, it's like I have this idea in my mind of how it's going to turn out. And then I look at it and I'm like, well, what the hell did I do wrong? And then I'll set it down for a month and get back to it eventually. You have to do that, though. Like, if you don't, you'll start messing up again and again and again. And it will never look good. If you take a good break, come back to it fresh, you know. So much better for the head and it ends up turning out so much better. Yeah, like, uh, I love the, uh, what was it, Uncle Jesse's resin smoothing 3D prints, FDM prints with, yeah. like, UV resin. Uh -huh. And then I've seen, like, the Galactic Armory's been doing it, and Bolt Fox, and a couple other people on YouTube have been doing the same thing. And every time I try it, I'm like, this shit don't work. <laughs> they're lying. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing something that I'm not doing, or they're leaving a step out, because it does not work the way that they say that it does. So I just go back to using my... Toothpaste. And yeah. Okay, primers. Yeah. Toothpaste. Yeah. Yeah, I've 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 not tried that yet. To be honest, I don't want to waste any resin on that. 
Right. I think resin is too expensive. Oh, sweet. To, uh, to kind of waste like that. Mm -hmm. And also, like, I like to take a little bit of material off and then cover some up, you know. Not just put it on and then, you know, carve out the lines. I, I'd rather just sand a little bit, you know. It doesn't hurt. I hate it. Yeah, I do. But it uh, doesn't hurt. You can learn, you can always learn something new about sanding. Except no one ever. <laughs> uh, if sanding the FD imprints, I was kind of written, not sticking, not sanding. Yeah, I am. I always, I, I pre-sand. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. I've never done it over like a straight up raw print, like put the resin on there. Um, so maybe that's the problem. Yeah, I don't know because I haven't tried it, so it could be. There's definitely a lot of uh, inhib inhibition problems or issues with resin prints. You can't put uh, platinum silicone on top, you have to clear coat it. Oh, sweet. Oh my god. Sam, I absolutely love you. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be painting a Mjolnir soon. Like, do you know this was the first prop along with the axe that I made? I wanted the both of them, right? And seeing it, that first one is a, at a friend's house, so I gave it to him. And I just want to see the difference now, you know? I've learned so much from all of you guys that it's just crazy it's it's totally exponential you know learning this stuff for me at least there's definitely some some curves here and there but uh, you go back one year and you're like wow I would have never thought that I'd be doing this now you know I was think you know it would take me a few years to get there but uh, you know you talk to good people and then they show you and then you show them your stuff and it just comes up together really well oh yeah also i'm loving these live streams like it's just yeah and uh i'm just i, I love talking to you guys and and uh, the guests and remember that there's a giveaway happening right now and you have to follow Daryl, uh, Faye, Frank and me and comment on my post tag three people and also share on my stories and tag me so I can see it and uh, oh, there was no more paint in there and I was like <laughs> trying to spray it like a madman silly silly me things will react well to the resting prints Flatten and really sensitive. Yeah, yeah, they are. But with the 2K, it was all good. Uh, because some of the resins have traces of sulfur, yeah, which will cause issues. Yep, they will. That's the problem right there. Yep. Yeah, platinum. I, yeah, I've seen platinums have. I've had platinum issues trying to cast uh, resin parts, and usually I'll sand them and. Hey. You know, cure with alcohol oh. and like <laughs> coat it in primer and let it sit for a month before I even try to cast it in anything. And Daniel, yeah, they're the UV resins I'm talking about. Yeah, the ones that you use in a printer. Um, I haven't tried any of that like hobby kind of resin that you use, like the flashlight over that cures like instantly. You know what just happened? As a side note, something funny. <laughs> I have my sample thing, you know, to get some paint out, and I dropped it inside of the Illumilaster bottle. <laughs> so, I'm gonna try to fish it out really quickly, and if not, I'll have to. No, no it's down there. I'll just. Yeah, that's not happening. I'll have to. 
use some of that paint and then yeah I think I have one more don't I? yes I do no I don't oh, do I? Mm. Oh, no. yeah it just fell in there <laughs> I'm silly it just slipped right down there no, I'm not gonna use this already. All right, I'll use this one. Oh, fuck it. Oh. Yep. Like dragon skin is a platinum. Uh, the umu that you buy off of Amazon is a skin. What else do I have? Mold Max is a tin, I believe. Yeah. Tin cure. I'm going to paint this with the uh, Adobe Lasta and then I'm going to do quickly a few, well, uh, I'll paint a few in black and uh, and then I'll show you what I'll do with the with the grey and then we'll leave it at that, like I, I don't expect you to stay um, for a lot more if you have to go I'll, I'll know I'll do that, I'll stay probably for about um, 40 minutes more and then I'll finish the stream just because I want to get this done and I, was, I want them to see it to kind of see what I'm doing but uh, yeah if you have to go just it's okay bro and in fact it's just been a huge huge blast with you and uh, sharing the screen with you has just been amazing I always learn something new from you and you're just a lovely guy so thank you so much for coming man mm -hmm. and yeah you stay as long as you need or as long as you want to man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, this is looking so good. I'm gonna stop right there on the pommel. Because oh, I'm in love with it. You're just gonna stare at it forever. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, this is... I would never think that... I could do something like this, could paint something like this, this well. I'm not being like... Um, not trying to compliment myself, but just like it's incredible how much progress we can make in a year. It's it's nuts, bonkers, man. Um, so yeah, was the other piece? I did already do it, didn't I? Uh, I did. Okay, got this. Let's do the black really quick. And. Da -da 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 -da. I think, uh, but I think you're sharing the screen on Skype, <laughs> and that's why maybe you have a little bit of cut off to the voice, but not a lot. But just, I was just wondering if you were aware of that. Yeah, just. All uh, right, I gotta take off. Yeah, that's wonderful. I uh, appreciate you being here with me, having me on. I'll be back. What is it next? Saturday? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be weathering, and that's gonna be so much we're fun. We're gonna do a weathering. That's gonna be fun. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna break out all the all the, the, the tricks for weathering. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think I, I think I'll have a piece to actually weather instead of using spoons, so you can get a, uh, a better idea of what I'm working with and how to apply things versus a spoon. Because spoons are great, but sometimes you need something a little bit bigger to show people. Yeah, wonderful. So we're gonna go with that. Well, man. It's... So yeah, I, I I dropped a couple links for socials. Um, yeah, IG, nice. It's all in the description as well. That. And remember that you guys have to follow him okay. if you want to enter the giveaway. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, so, oh, Daniel Wiggins, I want to check out your YouTube. I want to see what you've been working with. Yeah, yeah, he's great. And uh, Daryl, thank a, you so much for coming in. Or you can DM me. Mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. I love uh, talking to Daryl. He's both of you guys, Daryl and Daryl. Um, you guys are so talented and so so nice to talk to. But yeah, man. Uh, so to leave the 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 stream, just close uh, Skype, just cl like end the call, and that's that's how you do it. 
Yeah, so guys. And I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk yeah, to you brother. Soon, brother. I appreciate you having me yeah, on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming, man. Big, big hugs. You're amazing. Always. And I'll be back next oh, week. Oh, yeah. To do some more. It's going down. It's going down. <laughs> thank you, man. All right, brother. Yeah, bye, bye guy. Bye, my man. Uh, all right, let's change the screen to just me. Boom, 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 boom. All right, guys, so we are alone now. Well, yeah, you're alone with me here. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do the black now. We'll do this fairly quickly. Uh, I think you get the you get the idea of the tools. I'm really sad that I dropped that uh, teardrop or whatever this thing is uh, <laughs> in the Illuminaster bottle. I hope it doesn't dissolve. I will try to fish it out somehow. I need to. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's enough paint. Tweezers, maybe, yeah, I have to get some. That's how um, I will, but they're upstairs, so when we finish this one, I'll definitely. Uh, I'll definitely try and do that. Right. So, uh, we're just going to cover, we'll take these guys, we're going to cover both, um, all the pieces basically that are not the spun ones. So, uh, pressure down, down to about 20. Or even like, 50, yeah, 20 psi. Oh, there we go. And da, 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 da. Just making sure they're all covering everything. Yep. And we already did the masking. So, yeah. Without any hesitation, do cover your Illuminaster with black. <laughs> I had such a good time with Daryl, like he's just such a, such a sweetheart and always willing to help others. And, and, and yesterday we had a good time too, like Faye and I, it was, it was amazing. And she helped me so much with setting everything up, like you can't imagine. Because she does uh, live streams as well on YouTube. So um, yeah, she gave me a lot of advice. one try to get as even of, of a coat as you can let's do this one so you gotta be careful there we go Good inspiration. I'm using similar techniques right now on a prop. That's wonderful, man. What are you doing exactly? If we can ask.
I must say, I thought that I would be faster doing these things, but when you're talking, it's kind of difficult. I also, I don't want to rush it. I want it to look good. There's two. Let's do one of these. It's fully covered, yep. Printing, placing inch and battery connections for bracelet insides. Oh, nice. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, like like foldable, um, already like with the hinges, like the print, it just prints directly with everything. Uh, all the connections made, that's interesting. I've never done that, but it is interesting. Make sure the, the tool is correctly placed. I'll try and go through these quickly. I have an extra tool that I haven't shown you yet, which will help me fill in those little insets on these pieces. We're halfway through these uh, these guys. Yeah, some tweezers. That will help. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Can't stop thinking about it. Oh, I might as well just pour it on there. In there this time. Oh yeah. Boom.
Oh yeah. Someone, something, someone subscribed. I'm gonna see it in a bit. Someone donated, someone what? Subscribe, thank you. Alejandro something. That's pretty good. Now that I think about it, I sh couldn't, ah oh, no no, I was thinking I couldn't have maybe not have covered these in a luminaster, but uh, yeah, because they have the lips. And just in case, you know, you know, it's good, big enemy, damage the prop, you know, you can see a few scratches, even though the coating is supposed to protect against scratches. But, um, yeah, maybe she faced, she faced a really, really uh, big enemy, and, um, she was not expecting uh, to have a prop or to weapon damaged. Mm -hmm. So in case these guys uh, have some like damage, like physical damage, so some 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 like scratches or stuff, because at the end of the day it's paint, you know. But because I have that clear coat. Um, over the Illuminaster, that will protect it. Oh. A masking tool. There we go. Alright. This guy. Oh, this guy first. All right. Oh no, it's already done. This guy. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, as a reminder, I have a 50% discount on my shop right now. It ends tomorrow, so uh, if you want to grab something, do it. Mm -hmm. So guys, uh, how are you guys doing? What are you working on besides Daniel? What are you doing? What do you got, what do you got, uh, got your hands on right now? Kind of hungry now, to be honest. I should get something to eat. It's uh, 30 past midnight here. That's done too. Now these two guys. Which are the first pieces? Still mega shiny. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. Rich stream, gotta go to work. I'll get this model second to none. <laughs> Thank you, man. I really put in the time and, and the love. I would, um, you know, help you guys learn something as I learned, you know, when I model them and when I paint them for the first time, I always learn. So I try my best to help that show, you know, and when you learn, you will, when you, when you paint them or when you put them together or print them, you will feel something, you know, you will, at the end of the journey, you will have something you didn't have, not just a prop, you know what I mean? So... Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Oh. And have a good day at work. Yeah. looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. Alright, I uh, painted everything black. Uh, the, the, these guys that I needed to paint black, I uh, already did. I'm going to paint this one. <laughs> the, this guy that kind of we had an accident with. Let's see. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's much better. <coughs> okay. I'm gonna leave that there. Dry. And, uh... Now we click out these mats. What else? Um, then we'll have to click out. Ah, yeah, aluminum last of these and click out. Alright. So, yeah, I'm gonna finish this black paint doo -doo 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 -doo. on this one. I don't know what happened here. Let's see. Yeah, it's not so bad. Might just need to clear coat it again and do the scratches and and we're good. Yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, that's salvaged. Mm -hmm. So guys, uh, yeah, if you like this stream and you want to donate a little bit, yeah, just do that. It'll show up on the stream. Mm -hmm. If you think this was valuable, Let's click out these guys with the spray gun actually. Ugh, so let's pull the one that I have. Alright. Gloss. Matte. Okay, that's over that. <laughs> This is uh, the Montana one. Yep. There we go. The Montana. It's the mat. So I'm going to make sure that I spray it in this direction so it doesn't touch my pieces. 
the other ones are just the chewing touch. All right. Let's start with this one. I'm going to try and actually uh -huh. I'll do it this way. In this direction, because that's the window. So. Uh -huh. Well, that's the hammer. <laughs> the head of the hammer is there. Yeah, just a little bit. Remember, don't lift your uh, your masking fluid yet. You will need that. You need to peel it off after this stage. So, let's put you guys here. Mm -hmm. The mat one, yeah. It's pretty, that's a really good spray. Yep. So a third one, always make sure that the masking tools are correctly placed. I haven't taken off my mask, my respirator in this whole session. I'm good, like I'm really good. Another one down. Oh, there's a moth. <laughs> right. This one, but if you already did, it's kind of fast, definitely faster than airbrushing. starting to feel my back, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Who's here watching this? Let me know. Type in the chat. shiny oh these two <sighs> oh 
Oh wow, Kevin. Hey buddy, you're still here, and, and Kelly. Wow, you guys, you guys are badass. You guys are badasses. So yeah, uh, Kevin, I know that you don't have an airbrush yet. Or did you get one in the end? But uh, this is the perfect exercise, you know, uh, for airbrushing. I think, uh, yeah, that's all clear-coded. All right. So many different sheens in these props. All right. Good. Nice. All right. Put this. And now we need to let those dry. I'm gonna maybe clear coat this this guy. In fact, let's see. Let's see. I haven't yet taken out the uh, the dust layer out. That looks really good. Really softly do that. Perfect. All right. Let's see. So we have to click on this and that and this. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually. Uh, that's for another day. I'm gonna continue with the masking tools and. Uh, create that that third material that again let's let's show it to you <laughs> I'll show it to you uh -huh. so uh, as you can see um, here are the the batons right so you can see that top center image we have done the black, the, the gloss black on the tube, the uh, aluminum elastor, and then the black. We need to do the gray now. Okay, and that gray is, is this one, all right? This is the material. It is matte, but we're gonna wither it a little bit like it shows here, uh, but that's the color. It's just a gray, right? So we're gonna be using the steel from r 2. And it's a metallic paint, but because we have that matte, black uh, that map black base um it's not going to be as shiny as a luminaster you know on the over the gloss black um so yeah that's it and then that's the color for the roughness it is this you know this map it's just some 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 oil with naphtha you know it is not rust it's like maybe blood dry blood or some, some kind of like heat um because uh, these guys are going to get heated up with electricity so that could be like some burns or something like that, right? But not rust. Definitely not rust. Um, even though burning creates rust. So definitely some kind of something. But not like typical rust. Okay. So. Let's get that steel here. I've got it. From our clad. And uh, we're going to airbrush it on. Yeah, you got the airbrush. Nice. Now, do you have your all clap paints? Let's see. This is dry. Wonderful. So, see? Now, I'd say if you take out the the masking tool there you can see that lip has the uh, aluminum elastor on right that's perfect so I'll just put it back on again for the moment and we're gonna we're gonna put the, the other masking tools on so these guys So maybe not yet, since this is not fully dry. I'm gonna actually take off the uh, the masking fluid. So with a toothpick, we shake that for later. With a with a toothpick, 
Um, we're gonna. Is this the screen still on? No, there we go. Yeah, with a toothpick. Mm -hmm. Just gonna get rid of the uh, masking fluid so it's all over the edges. So you can see now because the, the light you know, tells you where they are. So you see here, this, there we go, some latex. Just rub it gently and then with your finger. See, and that has the Illumilaster with a 2K on top. So that will, you know, bring out that sheen. You know, let's see. Let's see this better here. Maybe zoom out a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, so I didn't overdo this. It was really important that uh, it felt natural. So just a little bit, not too much. You'll be able to see the raised areas. Here, there we go. see it better. Hmm. And it's okay if you leave some of those um, covered because when we hit it with the oil paints that will mean that the scratches were made after it was it got dirty you know so yeah there we go you know a little bit goes a long way most of the times you know in these um, in these cases so now these guys I'm gonna place in line here <laughs> all right let's go to the next one here See that? That edge. It's important to leave these to fully dry, but also if there's some grey there, it's okay. Oh. Just pick it out like that. Any questions about this process? Remember that we placed the masking fluid before we sprayed it with a black. That's why it's the, the, the layer underneath with a different sheen, with a, with a different sheen and uh, much brighter. And it just catches the eye. But you definitely don't want to overdo it. I like that, that kind of like grey edge, it's pretty cool. Happy accident, you know? Happy accident, okay, so this guy, here, yeah. next one. I can see one here definitely. And the masking fluid is uh, water-based and it, it dries with the air. So in summer it dries really quickly, in winter not so much, it takes a long time. Mm. Oh. Masking till down.
Mm -hmm. I'll wait till I start a new project for them. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. And tomorrow is Monday. Well, actually, it's already Monday. But, uh, oh yeah, well, oh, Jim. Yeah, I shouldn't go to bed too late this week. Just wanted to make sure that you guys understand what we've done here. this one left and I will do the grey and uh, we'll leave it at that what do you say I think uh, that's all the uh, masking, removing. Yep. All right. So now, the grey. Again, steel and more clad. Um, This is time consuming, yeah, it looks so good. Yeah, it is, it is. Everything that looks good is time consuming, unfortunately. But you know, it's relaxing. This is why I can't, uh, <laughs> I can't sell these finished. It's just too much work. And I can't do worse than this. I have to put in everything. Otherwise it's uh, against, against me to, to uh, rust a job. I can't do that. All right, so first off, let's put the masking tools, uh, the other ones on before it's too late and I spray some of this stuff on there. What about if I put it like this? Yeah, all right. No, let's go slightly the other way. Yep. So it doesn't fall. Yep. Right. So you see now, we have the grey uh, coating 
showing, the rest is covered. And I'll put some blue tackle tape on the edges. Like so, like so. These guys have their own special masks see that. Well, I have some tape that I might be able to put down. That's the, that's the tape that we're going to be using today, just covering these seams a little bit. Mm, if that wants to stay. If not, we can just pinch it like this. Yeah, that does not want to stay. Yeah, right. That's okay. Let's paint these guys. And uh, I can't go with it over too much. I, I can't go overboard with this paint because it will turn it lighter than what I want. So just uh, remember that. Don't. Uh, don't do it too much, don't go too heavy with this. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going to paint uh, one of the little ones first and see. And that's going to tell me how light I can take it. Because this is definitely a dark grey, not a, not a middle grey, you know. So let's see, our pressure is good, 
15 psi, 20. Yeah, that instantly brought it back up. So yeah, don't go too heavy with it, let's see. Let's, I can, let's see how light I took these. Ah, uh, yeah, I can go a little bit more. A little bit. I went too light, or too much, too heavy with this paint on, on the last, uh, on that test I did. Uh, this isn't looking too bad. If uh, it's too much, then we can always bring it down with washers, but uh, hmm, yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. We want a bit of contrast. That's enough, I think. Yeah, that's that's as far as I'm going to take it. So I'm going to use this one as a sample. So let's do all of these first. Amazing. Next one. A little bit like a Lumilastar, you don't want to go too heavy with it. Even this is a thinner paint than a Lumilastar. Mm -hmm. It's easier to build up too the shade of grey that you want. Yeah, that's about it. I don't want to go too heavy. And after this, we're going to clear coat again with a mat. Because the uh, diamond like carbon coating is matte it's actually really interesting like and they do this for watches and the pistons in the car engines so it's really slippery so really hard to scratch so therefore you're saving oil and uh, they wanted to do this i don't know how far they came or how far, how far they got but they want to do that with cars since uh, 2015 or so So some watches have this like dark grey finish on them that is matte. It looks really good. That's what this is. Looks so good painted. Yep. It's cool because we have different uh, finishes, you know, different sheens, different paints. All comes together nicely. Yeah, that's about it. Covering tiny pieces with airbrush is easy. The problem is like the hammer, you know, the big ones.
see if you wait and don't take that masking fluid off uh, you can clear coat without the masking tools um, these ones without these ones without having to worry about ruining that metallic sheen from the aluminaster the key is to try to avoid clear coating all at once all the different um, materials you know because then you're going to bring all the shins together and it's going to just look fake like painted oh domino effect effect right there uh who else no one else from these little guys uh-huh no i'll keep this one as a sample let's uh let's do these ones So I can hold it like this. This is going to be the trickiest. Most definitely. happen with my sheen <clears throat> yeah that looks pretty good Hey, stay there, you don't move. baby exactly what I wanted you see that all the materials isolated there we go different sheens everything works perfectly so let's finish this one here the importance of wearing gloves huh <laughs> Truly important. Mm 
Pretty good. Are we done with the uh, with the grey? Ah, oh, here. Here's one more. Perfect. I think we're done with the grey. Let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh wow, that was that's perfect. That. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks uh, pretty much done. Mm -hmm. Don't do this. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the stream has come to an end. I think I'm going to click out again. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. For today, that is. I could clear coat with the uh, 2K. I think I might do that. The piece is. Uh huh. I might. Uh, Alumilast. Uh, the handle. And then click on that. Might do that. Might do that. Yep. Big handle. Mm hmm. The masking tools are printed as well. They're 3D printed in resin. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I have those for next Saturday before dial sessions because I have my other workshop in Spanish, so I have to keep those unpainted. But as far as click hosting, I have to click over these. Uh, these guys, I might have to. Yeah. Do the spin spy effect again. Yeah. Trying to do everything at once is kind of difficult. So again. This is for the handle. Yeah. Maybe I won't. I won't. Um, I won't do this today. I'm going to clear code yeah, the pommel. I'm going to clear code the pommel. And these guys with a 2K. And that's that's going to be the end of the live stream. Also, these first uh, with a mat, with a mat clear. 
again. With a match for it. Although, I kind of like it like this too. Or maybe a satin. Nah. That's good. That's pretty good. How easy it is to do this with the stands and the masking tools. It's just, it's just a treat. Like I, I would have to mask. Oh, it's impossible. I would have to be masking and yeah, and I'm masking every five minutes and taking twenty to do to mask one piece. Like what? Thank you. A great time. Also, fact, we could do the red, <laughs> the red bits, but um, uh, it's just so late now, like it's over three hours. Like, what do you say? Should we, should we leave it at like this, or uh, do you want more action? down yeah. you gotta be careful oh again Masking tool down. Yeah, see when when you have tape and you have the patience to put it on, these stay way better. <laughs> oh shit! Again. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna click on these now. All right. So, again, for the uh, for the uh, little pieces, we have we have this finished right now. There we go. So you see, so you know, this is the finish for the link pieces, minus the red bits in between and minus the weathering. Um, so Really, really, really proud, really happy with how these came out. You have the, the black gloss, the 2K, the, uh, the Lumilaster with the 2K, and this with the matte clear coat. So, uh, yeah, I mean, truly happy with these guys. The masking tools are a treat. I'm just like, I can't, I can't believe it still how, how well they work. Um, so maybe I'll click out these tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, and I'll finish that and the pommel and, and the handle and stuff and I won't even maybe livestream that. But um, 
and then these guys we have this finish right we have the uh, the matte well we have the gloss black there we go we have the gloss black um, on the tube we have the alumilaster uh, the, we have the blue tack we have the blue tack <laughs> there we go and then we have the matte surfaces for the for the well we have the chip defect too and we have the matte surfaces for both of the uh, of the uh, coatings on the on the metals so see it's subtle i like it i'll be putting the mask and tools on again for weather to, to weather the uh, the great areas really loving that tone let's put these together and see how it looks like you know after all that's that's what it's all about this guy comes here and uh that would be a uh, whole chain like link whatever you want to call it and then let's see another one on top there we go and they just go into each other so easily and it looks really good in my opinion there we go so that's without weathering of course and uh, yeah so we'll do that uh, next week I'm going to be uh, finishing the bits on the hammer and stuff and also the, the, the red uh, strips here, stripes, whatever. So yeah. Oh wow. Really. And it weighs like like it should. It's really sturdy. So here guys. I'm going to put this here. And uh, I'm going to uh, talk to you. My face. Ah, Alright. So that's, that's it. That's it for this session. Um, we covered all of the finishes without the weathering, masking tools, Lumilaster, Duralumen, um, not all clad, but all, we'll do that some, some, you know, some other day. And uh, it still stinks. No, no, I'm gonna keep it. And uh, so yeah, guys, um, if you have any questions, uh, drop them in the comments. Message me on Instagram. Remember that you have a giveaway going on. Um, that uh, is going to end on the 15th and uh, apart from that i think we've covered pretty much everything uh for this session so yeah everything so again guys thank you so much and uh, i'll see you on saturday i might do one painting the hammerhead like on wednesday or something like that but just me so you can see that too and uh yeah guys thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for for coming uh, thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah, I'm going to go to bed right now. <laughs> yeah, bye, guys. <laughs>